what is going on everyone it's jay here so basically what i'm going to be doing in this video is i'm going to be analyzing but also just more of kind of discussing the new trailer that we got at tokyo game show for 2.8 um i'm going to be basically like i said analyzing it but it's going to be more of a discussion i'm going to be watching it on my ipad and i'm just going to kind of go over um what's going on in here my thoughts about it um anything that i think is important i'm going to talk about and then just kind of go over the things that we got because there's a lot more of stuff in here that i think is just kind of interesting for the future of this game that we don't know about yet um but as we start off with this trailer you see that everything is just like in nice cgi quality um which is really nice because we haven't had like a cgi never mind i'm lying uh we had a cgi kind of intro for dream drop distance but i guess what i'm really trying to say is that it's really cool to see a, a new one and you know this is going to be in like really high quality and it looks really good i can tell that this is going to be the intro cutscene for birth by sleep a fragmentary passage 0 0.2 um and I just want to also note about this intro cutscene. I feel like this is basically the cutscene, um, or at least the intro to this game. Anywhere inside this trailer where there's actual gameplay of any sort or, um, you know, back cover footage, I feel like that is all still a part of the intro. It's just, of course, they put the different footage over top of that so obviously we're not seeing what's going on but um what i'm saying is basically i think that this is basically the intro cutscene just other stuff was put over it so there's gonna be a lot more i guess really good looking um you know cgi scenes during that whole cutscene that we're going to be seeing in 0 0.2 once it comes out in the beginning of the cgi movie we actually see you know sora riku and kairi all in kid form which is really cool to see and then he kind of sort of reaches down and we see Aqua um, under the water, which is a very interesting, you know, concept. Um, I guess sort of like how she's in the realm of darkness. And then she falls kind of the same way as Roxas did and also Sora in Kingdom Hearts 2 and 1 in their CGI intro cutscene. And then she kind of falls down into the Station of Heart the same way that the others did. So that's really interesting, but it looks really good. I do just want to note that any part where it's going to show Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance, I'm just not going to cover it, only because, you know, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance is an old game. It's just being remastered, um, so it's not really worth to kind of go over what's going on in there because it's just going to be, you know, basically what we've already played just in, you know, HD. 60 fps though so that's really good i'm really excited to play that and i'm also going to be streaming that just to let you guys know i'm going to def definitely be streaming 2.8 whenever it comes out whenever i can i'm probably going to be uh playing for like the first three days non-stop so just look forward to that now this whole scene is very interesting it shows the charm fall into aqua's hand and then it also shows Terra and Ventus their hand gets put out and they also have their charms and then they they like disappear the charms fall now this is one of the parts that I've found very very interesting in this trailer when Aqua kind of reaches out for the charms as if you know she's reaching out to Terra and Ventus we see those charms kind of twist and then they turn into what seems to be like Xehanort hearts because what it turned into is hearts and they kind of swirl around and they place themselves on the chairs of the organization, representing the new organization, but they're filled with 13 Seekers of Darkness, all Xehanort. And I think that this scene is really trying to foreshadow something. I don't know if it's just me, but I've seen Tetsuya Nomura really foreshadow the future of Kingdom Hearts, as in Kingdom Hearts 3. They did it in Dream Drop Distance, um, in the intro cutscene, like the whole thing was like a foreshadowing of what's gonna come. It had, uh, Sora and Riku both facing off Xehanort in like a very short scene and then they all kind of meet up at the top of that uh, canyon and when they all get up there all of the seven guardians of light are there um, we don't see Xehanort from that side we only see the guardians of light um, which is very interesting um, but I felt that like that was a foreshadowing and with this scene I think it's the same way because it shows Aqua walking up to what seems to be Terra and Ventus, but of course, from our perspective, it's actually freaking Venetus Ventus and Terranort. And when she tries to reach out to them and they get she gets close, they turn around and like seem to like stab her, I guess you could say. 
but when they do it changes to a scenery of where they're at the Keyblade graveyard. The only reason why I think that this is sort of foreshadowing is because Terra, Terra and no, sorry, Terranor and uh, Venitas Ventus, uh, you know, the combination, they were both there technically at the same time when Aqua was there uh, during the first original battle between T Terra, Ventus, and Aqua and Xehanort. But I don't know, I just have a feeling that this is sort of foreshadowing solely because those charms turned into souls that stood at each chair or stood at uh, two chairs in the 13 Secrets of Darkness and then it kind of pushes forward to them in their darkest form, Terranor and Venita Ventus, and then they kind of stab her in the Keyblade Graveyard. I just feel like if that were to happen in Kingdom Hearts 3, I think it's very likely since Terranor and the Venita's version of Ventus are basically forms of Xehanort. Because I have a feeling that when Xehanort kind of took the darkness out of Ventus's heart, I think he did it in a way where he implanted his own darkness in some way, shape, or form into his heart, and uh, it kind of came out with a part of his own soul or heart. Like, you know, another Xehanort, technically, because he had the yellow eyes. Um, I don't know if that means like a secret of darkness or a version of Xehanort. It could be both, um, or it could be one or the other. I just, ha I just have a feeling that that's basically what's happening here. All right, sorry, had to fix the video. It was getting darker or something like that. But yeah, other than that, in that part of the trailer, it was just really surprising to me. Like, it just looked really cool how they showed Terra and Ventus. Like, it looked really, really smooth the way that that intro looks. And then, you know, the 13 Seekers of Darkness, mad foreshadowing. And then it showed Terra, Terranor and Venitas in the Ventus form. Like, it just looked so amazing to me. The way that I reacted on my reaction video, I was just like, whoa. It, it was just really amazing to me. It looks really good as well. It's also really cool that there's a new version of Simple and Clean for this intro cutscene. It sounds really cool. It it sounds a lot more techno, and I really liked it. I'd be bumping it in my car too on the way to work or whatever. Like I just like the build up and then kind of the drop for when you know Terra and Ventus actually kind of stab Aqua. There's like kind of a drop there, and it it sounds really nice, especially the beat after that. So I really like this new version of Simple and Clean. In these next parts, we actually see scenes from 0.2 of Fragmentary Passage, and each of these scenes are very, very interesting. Um, the first scene, of course, right now is we see Ventus inside of the same casket that Sleeping Beauty sleeps in when she goes to sleep, and I think this is obviously just kind of um, giving an interpretation of how Ven is. Uh, he's basically sleeping. And I, Aqua knows this, so I think that this is how um, the darkness is kind of playing with her memories kind of thing. Uh, the same way that it was said in the last trailer, how the realm of darkness is kind of messing with her memories. And this is a very interesting way of showing it. Um, Ventus being in the casket, asleep. It's very weird, but it's very interesting. I also want to say throughout this part where it's showing off 0.2, there's a lot of new worlds that it's showing. And it leads me to believe that it's possible almost every world that was in Dream Drop, sorry, that was in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep is going to be in 0.2. Maybe not every world because we only see now the woodlands, at least what it seems, the dwarf woodlands. Um, we see her in like the mirror room or at least within the illusion of the mirror but we also see her kind of in a cave later down in the trailer so that's really weird um, but it's a new world that they're showing off the dwarf woodlands it's just it opens up what other worlds that might be in there it might honestly only be like the first three of birth by sleep dwarf woodlands uh, the castle of dreams and then maybe the other one. Sorry, I can't think of it off the top of my head. And right before it cut off into the next part where it shows some back cover footage, we see like a good cutscene of Aqua, you know, basically just talking. And it, it, 
it's amazing how good it looks to me like aqua you know the movements and everything like that just just the way that this cutscene was produced i guess you could say it looks really really good and i think that they're pushing this game in the right direction especially with this new kingdom shader and then next we get some footage for back cover of course like i said and there's a lot of new interesting things in the first part because there's basically like two different parts of each new game 0.2 and back cover there's like a first section where it shows some gameplay of both and then another section where it shows some more it's weird but i'm um, in this first section it shows some pretty interesting information the thing that had me a little bit more interested in this one was that the master of masters was talking to Ida, the unicornus union leader and he still sounds kind of doubtful where it's like are you really sure that seven people can save the world like you're the master of masters you can see into the future but why why are you not confident that things can go in the right direction also a said tries to kind of make an alliance with other union leaders ava the volpis foreteller she's saying how it's forbidden to create an, an alliance it's really weird why why would that it's it's just interesting why would there need to be a restriction against alliances i feel like that would have made more sense if anything so he might be on the right step a said might not be a dumbass after all completely um but why would it be restricted it's it's just weird but then we actually get some gameplay of 0.2 and we actually see within this gameplay uh very very briefly it's like a one second thing when Ankh was using magic Another command kind of pops up the same way you can use Spellweaver, and it comes up with Blizzagun, or one of those. So it seems like the strongest magic, which is, you know, gun at the end, is going to be usable in this game as sort of a reaction command. I guess when you do enough magic at the same time, if it doesn't go into the activation of Spellweaver, you can use gun of it. So Fire Gun, Thunder Gun, Blizzagun and i just think that that's very interesting and very nice um because i don't think in any game we've actually been able to use a magic gun attack so it's going to be pretty fun to play as that or play with that function and then we also see aqua facing i guess a boss inside the mirror she's basically facing herself which is interesting and then we're also seeing in like a mirror world uh her going through a bunch of columns and then she kind of twists the world upside down that's very interesting but i see uh, you saw that you can get a chest if you flip the world upside down so that's kind of cool and then here comes the end of the trailer which everyone knows near the end of the trailer there's always like kind of a big information drop as far as what people are saying and there were a lot of interesting things that were said in this last part it shows a little bit more of the conflict between the said and gula i think it kind of shows the spark of the argument that we saw in the last trailer where he's like we don't even know who the traitor is yet so he's probably like why are you blaming me immediately so i can see where that's coming from and then this is the this is the the breaking part we we get footage of two people in black coats so this cleared up a lot of confusion within the kingdom hearts community but like i said it's very interesting we see two people in black coats and it's finally confirmed that one of them is the master of masters and then one of them is the new sixth apprentice that is named Luxu, as far as we know we don't know how to pronounce it at the moment it's l-u-x-u -U. i'll say Luxu for now i don't think it's Luxu. i feel like that's weird but anyways we see Luxu with the keyblade uh the dark seeker keyblade i guess you can call and the master of masters is talking about how um, basically it's up to you and you're going to be alone from this point forward, uh, without his guidance. So I think that this makes a lot of sense. Um, and it already kind of shows, I think what might be going on within this story, as far as Luxu and the master masters, why was Luxu not appointed to be a foreteller? I think it was because the master of masters kind of saw him as he can pass down his legacy too that's why he has the keyblade i feel like this was the scene where he possibly like just gave him the keyblade um the dark secret keyblade and he's like it was in a sense a good run but now you're gonna be doing this on your own which is weird i i want to the thing that i'm a little bit more interested about is why does he know right off the bat like uh you're gonna be going in alone from here on out like where is he going like he's not dying like you know what i'm saying so 
it's possible that the master of masters is still alive in some point or in some shape or form but i think it's also a possibility because what what if what if his eyes are yellow and he has like the original uh dark seeker soul and then he transfers his heart into luck shoe i think that's a bit of a long stretch but i think it's very possible because i don't know why he's saying that um, he's gonna be alone from this point forward. I don't know how old he is, but I don't think he's gonna die So like where is he gonna go where he can't be in guidance to these masters anymore? It's very Confusing at this point and then this last part is also another breaking thing We see aqua kind of floating down into the realm of darkness uh, or, or you know becoming one with darkness as she says and as she's like fading away or whatever Mickey comes and grabs the charm from her hand and then puts it back in her hand like, are you okay? The reason why in my reaction I was like, Mickey, what the fuck are you doing there? The reason why I was like that is because there's sort of a theory going around as far as Mickey being in the realm of darkness and Aqua still being in there and then he's out. It's like, why, literally, why is Aqua still in the realm of darkness if if Mickey was there. Um, this theory was kind of crafted by HMK, another Kingdom Hearts YouTuber, and it, I, th I thought that it was very interesting. Like, he must have left her in there on purpose or some way, shape, or form. Like, if he was in there, if he got in there and he was able to get out, why did he leave Aqua in there? It just makes no logical sense to me at the moment. Like, there's nothing else that can really come to mind other than him purposely leaving her there. But, I don't know it's just we need to see what happens with this because of course um, everyone's been theorizing that you know him being in the realm of darkness seeing aqua and then that's kind of like the same time timeline as Kingdom Hearts 1 where he got the Kingdom Key D we think it's theorized that he gets that Kingdom Key D by some sort of action that he does in the realm of darkness when he met aqua or saw aqua again something like that and it's I don't know it's just weird why why is aqua still in the realm of darkness if he was in there he could have gotten her out it just doesn't make any sense to me but nonetheless i'm really excited for this game there was a lot of new stuff that was shown in this trailer a lot of nice gameplay i also just want to state um i was kind of waiting for any sort of interviews to come out for any other extra information to put on this video there wasn't much new information as far as interviews or anything like that after Tokyo Game Show, even the new Famitsa issue, there wasn't much new information. But there was something that I saw on Twitter, and basically it shows a picture of Aqua and Ventus, two different screenshots from the first demo at, I think, E3, and then the new demo in TGS. They changed the lighting and they made the detail a little bit more better and now everyone basically just looks looks less plastic when we saw a cutscene that was Terra and aqua when she saw the vision of Terra, he looked plastic as fuck the lighting was was just not on point and there was a new screenshot from tgs trailer and it looks really really contrasted it looks really nice it looks better Pl Terra looks like Terra basically in the in the E3 gameplay he looked nothing like himself like it was really weird but that's good to know that they're basically tweaking the game over time in this sort of beta mode just to make sure that the game looks really nice um it would have looked weird if Terra really looked like that like I remember when when they showed that video I was just like yo Terra looks really weird but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video um, I am still working on the part 2 to the story lore of Kingdom Hearts Key, so just wait for that. Um, also, I just want to say thanks to everyone who subscribed to me after the trailer reaction. Um, I really appreciate the support. I hope you guys enjoy my content for Kingdom Hearts. Um, like I said, I will be, I will be streaming soon um, on Twitch of Kingdom Hearts as much as I can. Um, I am a little bit busy, but I'm going to be trying to stream as much as I can. Uh, I used to really like streaming. And now that I actually have good internet connection, I'm going to be doing that now uh, as much as possible. So uh, the link for my Twitch will also be in the description if you want to go follow me. Um, but yeah, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys in the next one.